1960. It was a typical working day at the Mount Stromlo Observatory in Australia. A keen astronomer observed an inconspicuous star in the Centaurus constellation with an unremarkable name of HD 101065. When studying the spectrum of the star's chemical composition, the scientist noticed something very strange. And the more he studied, the more weird stuff he found. At that moment, the unassuming astronomer couldn't even imagine that soon this star would bear his name the Shabilsky star, all because some things shouldn't exist. These things don't just happen, and yet they do. Over the past half century, astronomers have explored thousands of other unusual stars and studied hundreds of thousands of regular stars along the way. But there hasn't been a more fascinating luminary discovered than Shabilsky star. But what makes it so special? The strange composition of Shabilsky's star suggests that we are dealing with evidence of artificial interference. Perhaps someone is using the star as a radioactive waste dumping ground, someone intelligent, and it's certainly not us. In this video, we'll talk about the strangest and most mysterious star in the history of space research. Perhaps the evidence of highly intelligent extraterrestrial life has always been literally before our very eyes. Shabilsky Star So, what caught the attention and surprised Anthony Shabilsky in that distant year? This star is extremely abundant in chemical elements of the lanthanide group. These radioactive metals are much heavier than iron. They are extremely rare, not only on Earth, but in space at large. In the periodic table of elements, the lanthanides are highlighted in a separate line at the bottom. They are called rare Earth elements for their exceptionally low natural concentration. Well, so what? What's so special here? The fact is, such an amount of these elements can't be explained by any natural law, and the concentration of one of the elements seems extremely improbable. This is holmium, a heavy metal close in the density to platinum and gold. Holmium is vanishingly rare on Earth, which is why its properties are very poorly understood. So this metal hasn't been found at all on any other space body, except for Shabilsky's star. It seems that this star has all the holmium of our galaxy. But there's more to it. Shabilsky's star also contains many short-lived radioactive materials. These are heavy and very unstable elements that quickly decay into lighter, more stable atoms, which is why they are called short-lived. Now, let's take a closer look. The presence of technetium and promethium has certainly been detected on this star, and the longest-lived promethium isotope known has a half-life of just 17.7 years. What does it mean? It means that half of the original volume of matter decays within 17.7 years. In the next 17.7 years, half of the remaining half, and so on. Roughly speaking, the amount of matter remaining after 10 such half-lives is insignificant. That is, this matter should have almost disappeared in this star over the course of 177 years. But it is still there and the probability that humanity caught those 177 years out of 1.5 billion years of the star's existence when these elements are there is negligible. But this is where it gets really frustrating. The thing is that nothing heavier than iron can be formed in stars due to regular thermonuclear reactions. But there are a lot of such elements here. 
Well, a part could have entered the star from the outside during its formation, but not Prometheum. With a half-life of 17.7 years, all Prometheum would have evaporated one and a half billion years ago. But here it is. To put this into perspective, uranium-235, which is used in nuclear reactors, has a half-life of 700 million years, and its more stable counterpart, uranium-238, is 4.5 billion years old. By the way, this is the age of the sun. Considering these numbers, 17.7 years of Prometheum's half-life seems like an instant. And here's where scientists need to think outside the box. How can we explain it? Where do these elements come from? Several hypotheses have been proposed to explain the unusual properties of Shabilsky's star. The first hypothesis is the most conservative and largely boils down to the worn-out idea that we simply don't know or understand something yet. Proponents of this hypothesis insist that this is just a special AP star. AP is a special type of star called peculiar. Chemically peculiar stars is an established scientific term. But Shabilsky's star is strange even by peculiar standards. Although it has a powerful magnetic field typical of AP stars, its spectrum is too unlike that of other AP stars. The iron lines in the spectra of AP stars are very strong, but this is not observed at all in Shabilsky's star. Anthony Shabilsky himself initially assumed that the star didn't contain iron at all. This is one of the unresolved difficulties in interpreting HD 101065 as an AP star. And so far, there seems to be no explanation. This theory doesn't solve the problem of the presence of short-lived elements at all. In 2008, another group of scientists proposed a different hypothesis. Its authors claimed that the star has a pulsar companion and thermonuclear reactions occur in the star's atmosphere under the influence of its X-ray and electron-positron radiation. As a result, heavy elements, which are usually formed only in supernova explosions, are synthesized in the star's upper atmosphere. However, the presence of a nearby massive pulsar companion has not been currently confirmed by observation the hypothesis didn't pan out. A much more interesting theory suggests that the star contains some long-lived nuclides from the Island of Stability, such as Fluorovium-298 or Unbenilium-304, and that the observed short-lived actinides are the daughters of these elements, which are in secular equilibrium with their parents. Hold on a second. What on earth is an island of stability? What daughters and parents? And what is secular equilibrium? Don't worry, we'll help you get a hold of these concepts. Let's go back to the school chemistry course. In the table of chemical elements, everything goes in ascending order of complexity. The table starts with hydrogen. This is the simplest element that has one proton and one electron, and such structure is the strongest and most reliable one. Then the atoms get bigger and more complex. The last stable element is lead. The atoms of the elements following lead become so complex that they can collapse on their own, turning into simpler elements while emitting radiation or individual particles. This is radioactivity. Since 2003, even bismuth, which was previously considered stable, has been considered radioactive. The heaviest element in the table, oganesson, was artificially obtained by scientists. Its atom can exist for less than one millisecond. Naturally, the further, the less stable other hypothetical elements will be. That's why they don't occur in nature. 
but there's much more to it than that. Since the 60s, there has been a theory suggesting that behind these super heavy and highly unstable elements, there should be a so-called island of stability. This is a hypothetical sequence that includes currently unknown elements. They are also extremely complex, but at the same time, they live not for fractions of a second, but for years or even millions of years. And this is not a speculation, but a solid and well-founded scientific theory. So let's go back to Shabilsky's star. Some scientists suggest that the short-lived actinides in the star's spectrum are decay products of heavier elements, the very ones from the island of stability. And the fact that the actinides themselves don't disappear from the spectrum is a result of the secular equilibrium mentioned earlier. This is a peculiar situation in the interaction of radioactive chemicals. The amount of radioactive isotope remains constant because its formation rate is equal to the rate of its decay. Long-lived unknown elements from the island of stability constantly feed the mass of actinides with their own decay. Okay, let's assume it's true. Then the question remains, where did these islanders come from? And here we come to another hypothesis ignored by so many other scientists. Only those who have enough scientific courage dare to assume the artificial origin of all the oddities of Shabilsky's star. Currently, humanity is faced with a huge problem. Where to put radioactive waste from nuclear power plants? So far, the problem is being solved by simply disposing waste in the ground or even the ocean floor. But this is an extremely unreliable approach and may become a backhanded gift for the next generations. One of the audacious and dreamlike ideas is to launch waste on board cargo rockets directly toward the sun. Of course, this is extremely expensive and difficult and unsafe considering potential accidents. But suppose, after all, humanity used this approach. Now, imagine alien scientists sitting in an observatory of a distant civilization, one or two hundred light years away, looking in our direction and wondering, what kind of strange spectrum does this otherwise ordinary star have? Where do these heavy elements come from? Or maybe there is a highly advanced civilization using its star to dump radioactive waste. The cycle repeats itself. Very few researchers have the courage not to dismiss this hypothesis, but even fewer dare to speak it out loud. Vladimir Serdine a well-known Russian astronomer and popularizer of science definitely has what it takes to speak his mind. He repeatedly voiced the opinion that the radioactive dump hypothesis can't be dismissed. Perhaps this suggests that civilization is nearby. Any culture creates some kind of garbage around itself. When you are on a train, you see a dump and you are sure that there is a village or small town nearby. Any culture creates waste products as a result of its daily activities. You can't hide them, and they can be seen from afar. So they still would figure out that we exist, and they probably already figured out that we are here. Or maybe we also have figured it out. Who knows? Maybe just a few hundred light years away, there is a civilization that has mastered the industrial production of island of stability elements. Do they dump production waste on a star? After all, we came up with such an idea, even if only theoretically. And what are these materials like? Possibly all kinds of adamantiums, unobtainiums, and vibraniums from superhero franchises are not so science fiction after all. Why not? But that's a whole other story. <laughs>